All right, what you got on Nick Chubb there, Case? All right, well, we just heard Jay Wayne's opinion on what should be the 1-3, and again, I'm I'm really okay with the 1-3 and the 1-4 being either one of these Georgia backs, either Sony or Chubb. If you give me the choice at 1-3, I'm probably going to go with uh, Nick Chubb here. Uh, basically, right. for the reason of... of from 14 with with Gurley, you saw an extremely good back, and he caught the most balls that he had ever caught. It was, I, I don't know what the number is. It's not I don't have it here in front of me. 18 catches that rookie <clears throat> season for him that freshman year. But then you get into that 15 season once Gurley was out of there, and the beginning of that season was so special, and he just looked like a guy who was outrageous. And, and I think if he didn't sustain the injury that he had, which was a pretty gruesome injury, that you right now you, we would be discussing Chubb, uh, Barkley and Geis, and I think it would be you know a, a really candid and tough discussion whether or not who was the one one because of what this guy was doing was insane in I, 2015. I couldn't agree more, except for without that a gruesome, gruesome injury, he would have this would have been against Leonard Fournette last year because he would have been off the charts and come out as, in 2016. Everything you just said was spot on. He got all the he got not only was he just the be, nation's best uh, freshman running back in 2014. That was the year that Gurley got hurt, so he was he was able to get in there and overshadow Sonny Michelle in 2014. But that start, Mo Michelle could barely even get on the field. Exactly, but that 2015, like you said, he's got he's averaging 8.1 a carry with a long of 83 on you know nine 92 carries already seven touchdowns. Like he's getting a touchdown every you know eight times he touches the ball. Just ridiculous. Ridiculous so, stat, and then that was an ugly, ugly knee injury. But like, very yeah. poor knee injury. I was just pointing out that if sure. he didn't get hurt, he it would not have be against Saquon Barkley. It would have been against Leonard Fournette last year. Sure, that, I mean that's a that's a very fair point. Yeah, that's it. Because just because how awesome he was, and that so keep going. But I mean, in 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 fifteen, you saw I I saw everything that I needed to see coming off fourteen. That it was no fluke, and yep. he had gotten better. Like yep. it's not, it wasn't even a question to me. Like the eliteness of I don't even know if that's a word but the the it speed is. that he had after he was making contact with guys and and bowling them over and then reaccelerating there was nobody that could even keep pace with this guy and and, and not to I mean the the speed out of the backfield and acceleration out of the backfield was one thing but the thing that I marveled at was the fact that he would make contact at the second level and then the reacceleration was absolutely insane like nobody like he hit could, a NOS the, button right those and, first couple of steps were absolutely outrageous and to me. you're talking about this eliteness as a Freshman and sophomore playing in the SEC. Right. Vin running, Diesel hitting the NOS button. And running through cast in the they, vein of this, like the still best kid. Alabama defenses. He's, yep. He's still a kid. And, and, and he made Alabama look silly a couple of times. Yep. Um, there's not a ton of people who can say they did. Obviously, Sony Michelle in the championship game, like we just talked about, looked looked pretty good. And they, they probably should have fed him a little more. Um, but so after the injury that that occurred to, to Chubb in in 15 there he came back in 16 and you know he wasn't quite the same guy um, but in 17 you started seeing again the guy who possessed a lot of these traits the top end speed seemed to be fairly close to being back he was he was you know fantastic at bouncing off of guys running guys over and and, and then creating well on his own and he's just back back to kind of being that bowling ball and exploding a little bit but maybe probably lacking that elite burst that we were talking about just at the beginning of this exactly segment like here the 2016 season for this is really this is really close to me because i'm a gamecock and marcus Lattimore was the best running back in the country absolutely and he got his knee ripped apart and then when he came back the next year and he got hurt against tennessee i literally started crying i remember i was watching the game with mj and he, I saw it as soon before the announcer saw it. I saw it, and I said, Lattimore's hurt again, and I literally started crying. And so for Chubb to come back and play football again at a nice, solid level in 2016 was awesome. It, it was and decent. It, no, but not, not his play. Was, right. It was awesome for to the see person him, sure. to see. Because like you said, in 2014, 2015, pre-injury, he was Herschel Walker status. Oh, not like, There's Herschel absolutely. Walker status. So like just to get hurt... And to come back, I loved it to that, see you, you. I started pulling for Chubb because sure. at first I'm like I'm pulling You're against a game him. Cock. Yeah, I'm pulling against him. SEC After East. the injury, I'm exactly. I, he's beating us up. 
after the injury, I'm pulling for him. He's not as good in 2016, but he's on the field, and I just loved it. There's no reason that in that 14-15 season, a guy built like him should be able to do the things that he was doing. Exactly. That's what just didn't make just sense. Bo Jackson, to me. just Bo and Jackson, then, and then the 16 thing happens, and he, you know, he's, he's he's out there, he's out there, but he's a little bit of a shell of himself. But then in 17, I feel like you see kind of all of his attributes coming back a little bit. I mean, he still possesses the same outstanding balance, the quick feet, the bowling ball like features that he always did. He just may not quite possess that same explosiveness that we were talking about right in the beginning of this thing, where after he made contact with somebody or his first couple steps were just so fast and so up to speed. And it just didn't make sense that a guy with that frame could possibly do that. True. It, it, it really just didn't make sense. And I think all this really translates well to an NFL game. And you, can argue with that maybe he'll just be a one and two down guy but i think he's got all the traits to do it on all three downs you saw him catch some balls as a as a freshman in in uh at uga here um so you know i i could go either way on sony or chubb but i in, in my opinion i want chubb a little more than sony i think his game immediately translates to the nfl game a little smoother and you know maybe he does get profiled as a one or two back down kind of guy um but i mean yeah he, i mean he did only have 31 total receptions so it's a, like b less than half of what sony had and i guess that'd probably be the the deal breaker for me between the two is the, the pass catching ability but i mean this dude has all the key words i mean power speed agility vision forget an arm tackle the short area burst is Pretty awesome, pretty explosive. Definitely pre knee injury and post. I think well, it's getting stronger. Like you see exactly. him getting stronger and getting back to that. I, and I think he still has some room to improve sure. and get it, more back. He's, he's not wearing a knee brace, which is yeah so impressive to me. Yeah. That right now in seventeen, there is no knee brace visible. There's no there's no visible. Uh, like if you didn't ever see the 14 and 15 chub that you wouldn't really even know that anything happened. Right. You would still think he was a really good back. You just didn't know how good his good was. Right. right. That 14 um, is ridiculous. It's off the charts. And I can concede that, you know, Sony kind of played into that third down role. Now at, at this year, there wasn't as many catches to go around for any of the backs. Yeah. Right. Um, but Sony would definitely profile better as the third down guy. And that, that would be my one drawback of saying, you know, maybe I could be okay with Chubb or uh, Sony over Chubb. Is that, you know, the three down thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <There's> a... <laughs> well, like you said, solid the, grunting. The, 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 the funny part that the 2016 stats, the year after the injury, this is, we, we literally just spent a few minutes talking about Sony Michelle and his resolve as a person and, and everything that he went through. The thing that Chubb went through was, I'm Bo Jackson. I'm the next Herschel Walker. Oh, my God, my knee's crooked. Bad crooked. He comes back the next year. He goes 224. He carries a, carries a rock 224 times, puts up 1,130 yards, eight touchdowns with a long of 55. Like, that's a good that's season. That's a fantastic season. But that was a shell of himself. Right. You know what I mean? So, they're like the kid has obviously just to play the next season was a miracle. He To put up those type of stats in the SEC – was amazing and then he had obviously improved on it this year doubled his touchdowns and crushed it with on the same amount of carries went up 200 yards and double the touchdowns so i'm all about what this kid's been through and the not non knee brace wearing joker right now is awesome i think you saw a good step forward from 16 to 17 yep. you saw especially at the end of the season at 17 you, you saw a lot of the good traits of him coming back he can still get the edge at an elite level oh sure like, extremely well the one knock that i would say i have on him is that sometimes even when runs start in the middle of the field he is a lot of the times looking to kind of go out towards that sideline in multiple occasions that i watched for him not necessarily bouncing the run outside but after he navigates through the middle of the field like through the the center and the guard play there I, a lot of the time i see him kind of angling towards that sideline which i don't necessarily have a problem with well but I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know if that maybe was 14 tape that you no, were no, watching. No, no, no. This was all 17 tape that I'm watching with that. He was saying that that injury that he got taught him like a valuable lesson no, as a I, running I back. Sorry to cut you off. I didn't watch all 17 tape. I've watched all the tape no, that's possible to watch of this guy. No, but I, I was 14. Say, but my, my 
the the thing that I was saying right there was the 17 tape of him. Yeah. Kind of, he always seems to navigate a little bit towards the outside of the field when he starts to break one off a little bit. Well, he, so I watched this thing where he was talking about like that, that injury that he had and how he's trying to learn a valuable lesson because he was, this, his coach Brian uh, McClendon was telling him not to bust it to the sideline, just, just attack. And so like when he, it, that injury that he had occurred when Going he was to running lines. to the sideline yeah. versus Tennessee. And so, like, he, he kind of has that in the back of his mind. So it took him a little while before he would even – not think about it going to the outside. So I, I don't know. I, I, I it's, it's weird I, that you well, say I, that. I, I watched a lot of 17. I watched a ton of 17 tape just to make sure that I still had this guy ahead of Sony. And what I came away with was really good, and he can power it up the middle. But a lot, I do still see him kind of when he takes his runs, he starts angling to the outside a little sooner than I would maybe like to see that happen. But he's got the elite speed to 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 get not the elite speed, but he's got good enough speed. Yeah. To it's, it's, well, the game speed is impeccable. I mean, given he's his like, size, it's, it's right. pretty elite to be able to do what he does. Let me throw something out there before I'm, I'm done talking about these two guys because what we're trying to do is argue back and forth on the one, three, one, four, and we're happy taking either one of them, really. My thing about it is I didn't, I, I, I watched plenty of Georgia this year because they played themselves into plenty of obviously, uh, you a know, a big TV national spotlight. Na- they played themselves into natural, national spotlights, but I, both of these running backs had, had everybody's attention all year long. The problem with it for me was they're both so good. Like the, there was no change of pace because they're both so badass. I couldn't tell if when Sony Michelle came in, the defenses were just tired of trying to tackle Chubb. And then when Chubb came in, they're just like, we don't know what's going on. And uh, we're tired of tackling anybody around here. Right. You know, and obviously mixing that, DeAndre Swift with right. all that. You look at the uh, Oklahoma game and both of those running backs, both, I mean, Chubb is crushing it. And Sony Michelle's got three touchdowns for 180 yards on like nine carries. You know what I mean? So it's like they could do nothing wrong against a nation's top team. And so it, it, both of these guys were so good. I'm not sure if they tag team defenses together. Yeah to just blow them up all game long. So I'm not sure if, if I'm picking one today, I might lean Michelle myself just transferring to the NFL on his smoothness and he's a little bit lighter and maybe he can work a little bit in the passing game and all that. You're looking for guys that can be on the field all three downs. But I got no – I'm, I'm pulling for Chubb. Yeah. So I, I'm going I'm to just – say that you're lucky to be able to get either one of these guys at three and four maybe if i had to make a pick it was be, it would be sony at three but you can't go wrong with either one of them I'm, I'm my final thing on on chubb is just the model of consistency and he came back from a big injury and still did well in 16 and then has just continued to get better and i think that there's still you know room to even improve from where he was in 17 to even get back a little closer to where he was in 15 um, and I think just it's just very impressive for him to put that model of consistency out his entire career. And I, I'm not saying that like Sony that. wasn't nope. consistent his I whole career, that. but I feel like the Sony's, longevity. I mean, I feel like Sony's really gotten a boost from the national spotlight of these last couple of games. That, not, I'm not hard to any, ignore. And right, no, right. It, it is, and I'm not trying to take anything away yep. from him. But yep. in in my head, the reason why I have him ahead of him are for all the reasons that we stated in that last little bit that I just had. Yeah, and, and I, I'm okay. Like I said, to lead this whole thing off with, if you want to take Michelle three, I'm okay with taking. If you force me to take Michelle three because Chubb was gone, well, know, that doesn't even make sense. But yeah, you know what four, I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with going either I, either. I see what you're saying there, and maybe. Michelle doesn't do everything he did if Chubb hadn't beat the defenses up. I'm sure that Chubb does what he does without Michelle. Maybe Michelle doesn't look as spectacular as he does if 230-pound Chubb hadn't come through there and just busted him up all game. So maybe, maybe. I mean, Chubb is, is, is a little bit more of the running back mold. But Sony is a little more of that third down mold with with the first two with downs average, in with mind. The other, yeah, sure. And so he's, I do think Sony's a little bit more of an electric home run cut, and Chubb might be a little bit more safer from a quote unquote running back standpoint. Yeah. Sony might be that guy that scores the PPR points for you in fantasy football as Perhaps. an NFL running back. He might be, you sure. know, the more he might Sony might be more of the, you know guy that can kiss it consistently stay yeah. in your starting lineup versus Chubb. No, nothing wrong with Jordan Howard because when he goes for 100 yards and two touchdowns, you're super happy with it. But not that Jordan Howard is, is Nick Chubb. But you see what I'm saying? There? No, Look, no. That I, power mean, I, back, I, get, that, I get I get what you're saying in the profile of – you're basically saying profiling 
Chubb as a first and second down back. But I did. I, I think I did. I think that the reason that I have him at three is because I do believe that he can be yeah. the elite workhorse of of an NFL franchise, and I I think that his skill set transfers more immediately to being to the chance of being an extreme elite player. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's I why think I you have can, him ahead of him. You can look at all the guys that have Leonard Fournette in their lineups this year, and they'll be just happy to plug Nick Chubb yeah. in right beside him. Yeah. I mean, I can't argue against Nick Chubb. I mean, he's great. I love his game speed. It's quick on autopilot, but he has that other gear of acceleration. He has a great pad level, and he always gets leverage on the defender. He's going to drag him for an extra few yards. He has some of the most impressive three-yard runs that I've seen. Um, but he can also exploit you in space. He's athletic. He can hurdle you. He can put you down with a shoulder or a stiff arm. And, and he's good at not getting off track. Like, he'll shift his track to keep north and south like mm-hmm. i don't I, well there's not a lot of slowdown in his when he goes to make his move he doesn't slow down a ton he keeps it north and south which is one of my favorite things about backs sure is when they don't slow down to make those moves they just they they're elite enough to to get up field and make that that quick change of pace and and change of direction but really keep it kind yeah. of north and south and they're, they're they're big enough to run through any arm tackle that you're going to throw at yeah forget an arm tackle um but and, and then one last thing here for me on nick chubb is that he's also a good dude like he's one of the most popular players in the georgia locker room like he's admired for his ability um not just his ability but his work ethic and his modesty like if you watch him on an interview he's almost uninterested in even talking about himself or to you like he just wants to get back to what he's got to do to yeah. help his team win big and then, fan like, of that Love this dude. He definitely, whether you want, we can argue Sonny Michelle and, sure. and and Chubb all day, but like there's a tear break here and it's not even close. Absolutely. And I think that's the, I think that's the biggest, I mean, I think it's one and two. And then I think it's the, I think it's these two guys that are, I, you could even argue a tear break between them, especially because of the injury to Chubb. But then I think the net, you know, at four, there's another kind of sort of tear break. And I think that's, that's why I'm okay with either one sure. at three or four, however you want to juggle them up. I'm just partial to Chubb. Yeah. yeah. So if you're listening to this, target one four in your draft. It versus you know, if you got one five or one six, maybe the earlier you can get up there and move up a spot or two, it gives you the ability to be stuck. If you're at one four, you're gonna get stuck with one of these guys and you're in great shape. Last year, months away from my rookie draft, I pulled off three or four successive trades that ended up getting me into one five because I knew that I wanted Dalvin Cook or better. And I knew that Corey Davis was going in that mix somewhere, and I wanted one of those other four running backs. And I worked my way up into one five in a in a draft months ahead, just because I knew I could see the, all the rookies coming out, and I needed Dalvin Cook or better, and it worked out. And you got and you need to get there sooner than than later. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back on the other side with the uh, next tier of rookie running backs for your pleasure. 